You're watching Telecom TV from 5G World in London and I'm joined now by Frederick Tuveson who is Professor of Radio Systems at Lund University in Sweden. Frederick, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Now in the context of cellular and especially 5G, we're hearing a lot about MIMO technology. But what exactly is MIMO and how has it evolved? So, so MIMO we have, have a, today in cellular networks already. I mean, we have it in LTE where you have a few antennas at the base station and you have a few antennas at the user side as well. Typically you can support, typically you have up to four antennas at the base station and two at the user side, whereas the system itself can support up to eight at the base station and four at the user side. What we see today is that the massive number of antennas is actually the way to improve spectrum efficiency in 5G. It, I would say it's the most promising way uh, in addition to densification and going millimeter wave. And uh, taking it one step further, what we are aiming for is that we provide, and we have a huge number of antennas at the base station, for example 100 or 128 or something like that. It means that we can really direct the signal to where we have the users. In that way we get rid of the worst problem that we have today, interference, because it's the interference that is limiting the capacity that we have in the network. We also talk a lot about MIMO in terms of millimeter wave spectrum. Why is it so associated with millimeter wave? What's the characteristics of millimeter wave that require MIMO? Yeah, there, there is a difference there in talking about millimeter wave and sub, sub six gigahertz systems. In millimeter wave, we need a massive number of antennas in order to direct the signal to the user so that we get enough signal energy to where we have the users. Whereas at sub-6, we can actually use the fact that we have many antennas in order to make sure to use the scattering that we have around us, to make sure that all the signals from the scatterers, they actually add up where we have the users. So it's fundamentally different what we have at sub-6 and at millimeter wave. And what about the use of MIMO in today's cellular systems with sub-6 gigahertz frequencies? Uh, today you can, I mean there is a natural evolution in LTA today where you have more and more antennas at the user side, at the base station side, sorry. And then we can direct the signals and that's called 3D MIMO, which means that we can direct the signal both in elevation as well as in azimuth. And that's one step further, but taking it even further then we can also, we don't talk about directions anymore, we just make sure that we use all the scatterers that we have around us and at the user side all the signals they add up nice and coherently. You've talked about reducing interference but how does this play into increasing spectrum efficiencies? Uh, if we reduce interference then we can actually uh, then we can get the much better signal to interference ratio which is the uh, factor that d determines the performance at the user side, the user experience. So with, by making sure that the signals to the different users, they don't interfere with each other, then we can get a very nice signal to interference ratio for all the users at the same time. So it means that we can actually reuse the same time frequency resource block uh, for many users at the same time. In our examples, in our testbed, either at 12 or 22 or 24, depending on how we configure it. And what is it that you're researching specifically at Lund University? So what we have done in the past, we have de developed the first true multi-user massive MIMO test bed. Uh, so really taking it from a nice theor theoretical concept to reality. That we have done together with Bristol University here in the UK as well. What we are doing now is to, to say, okay, how can we push this system into the various directions? For example, how far can we push it when it comes to spectrum efficiency? How far can we push it when it comes to mobility of the users? How far can we push it when it comes to reliability? Uh, because that's also a key factor for 5G systems, is uh, to really get the reliable connection. Frederick, thank you very much indeed.